Hey guys, John Bird Bree here. So I've seen people asking on how to do decals in Source Filmmaker. It does require a bit of knowledge with the particle editor tool, so if you don't know how to use that, I would recommend going and uh, reading up on it in the uh, Valve developer Wikipedia. So let's just set up a new particle system here. I'm just going to call it TF Blood one so here we go, we have our blank particle, and we want to use a Team Fortress 2 blood effect. This could be used for various other sprites, but for this, I'm just going to pick a good uh, blood one. That'll do. So we've selected our texture, but we don't have any properties set, so I want to go through because this is going to be one single particle that's going to stay there for the lifetime, we want to have an initial particle count of one. So set that to one, then one particle is spawned. We can't see anything yet because there's no way to render it. So we want to add a renderer. We want to render an animated sprite. So hold on, change the background, you can't see it that well. So there we go, we'll have our blood sprite in but you'll notice it's facing the camera, so that's not much use because we want to have it sitting on a flat uh, plane. So we need to change the orientation type of it. There's three different orientation types. Zero by default, you'll find under render animated sprites, is it'll always face the camera, so no matter what direction you are from it, it'll point straight at you. There's one which you'll see it points at you on one axis but it doesn't you know pitch up and down towards the camera it can be useful in grass sprites for example uh, I believe a similar technique is used but 2 is the orientation type we want to use and that sets it flat to the surface so you'll see our orientation control point is set to minus 1 that means it won't orientate to any control points at all which isn't what we need we want to set that to zero, meaning that whenever we place it in the world, we'll be able to rotate the particle and it'll maintain the um, rotation of the control point it's parented to being zero. So we also want to add an initializer so it knows where to spawn. Personally, there, there might be other ways to do it, but the way I do it is position within sphere random. And by default, that will have a where is it? A distance of ma uh, yeah, distance max and distance min zero. So that's going to spawn always directly on top of the point. You could maybe do say you know a max sixty four, and that will spawn anywhere within this. It's not so good with our two D particle. So you could do let's see position within box random. We want it to spawn flat in the plane, so our Z will not be anything that will be zero. We could set so 64 minus 64. Another 64 minus 64. So you see, there is it's a bit hard to make out on this white background, but there's a box around, so that particle will spawn anywhere in that location. For now, we'll just have it zero 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 zero. So it will always spawn exactly on there. What we also could do is set the radius of the particle. Currently that's uh, the default radius that's going to be that scale when it's placed in the world. Under the system properties you can set the spawning radius. It's currently 5 so you could set it to 50 for a massive blood particle. 25. But what we're going to do is have it vary each time so we'll have an initializer that will set our radius random. See it's very small, it's currently 1, so let's say 10 minimum and okay 50 might be a bit too much, 25. So every time that particle effect is created it will be positioned within a box that's going to be exactly on the point because the min and max is 0, 0, 0 the radius is going to be random between 10 and 25 and the render is going to render it 
with the orientation type of 2 so that it's flat on the plane and the orientation is going to orientate around control point 0. Okay, so now that we have our blood particle and it orientates around the control point, it has our initializer set up so it spawns on 0 and has a random radius going to save it, so I will save this as tf underscore blood underscore decal. Now you will notice it will freeze up, there might be a way to fix it, but I believe it's locking up because it's trying to connect to the perforce server, which is what Valve uses for a kind of revision control, but that'll go through eventually. You don't always need to save each time. If I went in and changed it, it would update in real time with the particle editor. If you had a particle in your view here, you could see it. But that's a bit of an issue. If it crashed, for example, then you would not have them saved. So it's a good idea to save it now and again. We don't want to add it to Perforce, so we'll switch back into Source Filmmaker. Okay, so we're back in Source Filmmaker now, so we can now add our particle into the animation set. So we'll right click here, create animation set for a new particle. We want to pick our particle uh, file, which is TF blood decal. We'll select our TF blood one. Our start time will be zero because we wanted to be here from the very start of this shot. You could have it only showing after a certain amount of seconds. It might require some, you know, working out, which you can just uh, punch a seconds in there and it'll appear as soon as it hits that time. We'll set the emission duration to just a big number. So I'll be here for the whole shot. If you did watch the tutorial that Valve put out on particles, that um, you'll know that sometimes the particles won't show right away. It's uh, simply fixed by just dragging the playhead out of the shot and then back in. You should see our uh, decals showing on the world now. So we we'll want to drag this about. You will notice that when I drag this, the particle stays over here. That's a bit of an issue because it's only creating it whenever the um, you enter the shot. It's not going to update with the position. You can do this either playing it and then pausing it again. That sometimes fixes it, or just dragging the shot out and the shot back in, or dragging the playhead. Sorry. So um, now that's in. We'll position this up against the wall. So just drag it up there. And. Set that about right. It can be a bit tricky to get it exactly parallel to the wall. So what I tend to do is go into the rotation. So that should be minus 90. And now it's going to be exactly uh, lined up with the wall. It is kind of out a little bit, but that's no big deal. So I pause. That's not updating it. So there we go. Drag the playhead about and it came back. Now you should have a uh, blood decal in the world. So here we go, here's our particle in the world compared to just a standard gunshot decal on the wall. And there's not really any visible difference, so I'd say it works pretty well. One of the things we can do, if we have multiple copies of this particle, it's going to look identical pretty much, so apart from the scaling uh, radius, which is, if you remember, random between 10 and 25 each time it's created. But we can make that a little bit less random. So I have the particle editor back up. We're going to just add another initializer which will set the rotation to be random. So let's say by default it will be set up pretty good. It's going to be a random rotation between 0 and 360. This doesn't update right away. I'm just going to toggle this setting on and off and you'll see. There we go. With each time the particle's created it's done with a random rotation, not 360 degrees, a random radius, and that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Just going to save this again, and then go back into the world, and we should have a randomly rotated particle. So here we are back in Source Filmmaker. There is one thing to note about using particles, is that if I copy this animation set, paste it again, Let's see, move the transform across a bit. So we'll go, we'll have two copies of the same particle. But it looks absolutely absolutely identical. Now every time these particles are created, because we directly copied this, it's going to have the exact same scale, even though we set it to be random. This is because of the seed. Now each 
random element in the particle is based off a random seed. So if you set a random seed, for example, as one, the next time you come back into Source Cell Maker, if the random seed is one, it's going to behave exactly the way it did before. So it's a way to essentially have the random values be the exact same over different uh, shots. For example, it's used in uh, a whole, you know, it's used in a lot of things. Like Minecraft, for example, has the random seats where the worlds, and it's the same kind of concept. So what we can do is show the particle system in the element viewer. You see, there, see, there's our seed, which is minus nine six three three four three two. So if we just change that even by one, there we go. Our random value is generated using a different seed, meaning that that will never be the same. You ha you generally want to do that for each particle, otherwise you're going to get you know, identical particles throughout the world. Creating a whole new particle system for that won't have the same issue because we didn't directly copy it, but that's something to bear in mind if you do copy the particles a lot. One last thing to note is if I X out of this, an issue that people have with particles is whenever they load the game, the particles will be missing. I'll demonstrate that now for it. I'll just put Source Filmmaker back up. If we load our shot again, our session rather. So you should see in console there TF Blood 1. Our particle that we were using is currently unknown, so the engine doesn't know where to load it from. Let's see if we. Where is it? Okay, there's our handle for it, and you see there's no particle being shown, so I'll just X out of this again. Under your Source Filmmaker game, TF movies, particles, and particles manifest file. You'll see a big list of all the particle files that are being added. So these are all the TF2 ones. There's some, uh, yeah, there's Left 4 Dead ones for the uh, infected and survivors. So what I'll just do is add on the bottom here. Our particles were saved. Let's see, they were saved in my folder. It is called jmod, but this could just as easily be your user mod. I just, I'm using a different uh, mod in Source Filmmaker, but this applies to everything. So our particle is particles saved under TF blood decal. So if we just add this onto the bottom here, this is on our manifest. So the game looks at this manifest each time it loads, runs through all these particles, pre-caches them, so they work in the engine. We will want to add an exclamation mark in front of it. That forces the engine to pre-cache it, I believe. I'm not certain, but I believe that makes it pre-cache it whether it's used or not, which is a good idea. So we'll save that, boot up Source Filmmaker again, open up our session. You should see we aren't getting the errors we were getting before. Oh, there we go. Okay, I thought that wasn't working for a second. There is one small thing I noticed. At the very, very start, for like a frame or two, it doesn't seem to show up, but as soon as we... Let's see. As soon as we go in one single frame, they come up right away, so you might be able to fix that setting the start time of it, maybe like minus one second, but that might not work, so I don't know. Don't hold me to it. But there we go. Our particle's working again and not given the error that we were before because we correctly pre-cached it in our manifest file. I've noticed a few people having that issue and that's all it requires. So there we go. If you have any questions just uh, ask away in the comments there. This was my first tutorial so apologies if it wasn't very clear but there we go. Just ask away if you have any questions. So there we go, now, we now have two decal particles in the world that look pretty indistinguishable from any normal one, and they will be here every single time we go back in the game, in this... Uh... Okay, so now we'll have our two particle decals in the world that looks... they load in correctly. 
Jesus Christ. Okay, so now we are correctly pre-caching our particles in the particle manifest file. They load up straight away on the map load, and we're good to go. That uh, shouldn't happen again. As long as you pre-cache the particles, you'll always get them every time you come back to the shot. So there we go, they're pretty indistinguishable from the actual decals and they're a lot more customizable. There's various stuff you can do, having different rotations, having the blood, I don't know, slightly rotating, I don't know what use that would be. You could have slight gravity on it, for example, if I, let's see, if I open this up again, we'll add a movement operator. This is just an example, let's see, minus 10, so this particle is slowly. That might be a bit too much. Negative 5, so we'll switch back in and play. Okay, hold on. My shot's got a bit muddled up here. There we go. So you'll see our particles are created and they slowly slide down the wall. Mixing that with maybe rotating slightly and, you know, sliding down the wall, it could look pretty good. You can also add in, if you're a bit more experienced, some children particles so you could have some blood drops dripping off slightly. It's very customizable and it's definitely something I recommend looking into if you're at all you know, seriously interested in working with a source filmmaker. So if you have any questions just leave them down below and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.